Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service uh, here at the Lebanon Church of Christ in Dresden, Tennessee. Uh, my name is Will and uh, I'll be sharing this service with you. This pre-recorded service is being made available uh, for Sunday, uh, June 26, 2022. And uh, this is the last Sunday in June and we've had a great month at Lebanon uh, as we had our gospel meeting uh, back earlier and celebrated Father's Day last week. And uh, we're finishing up today a series uh, that we began uh, the week prior to our gospel meeting talking about uh, things that we need uh, in our world, uh, in our own lives, and in the church uh, today. And in the light of uh, so many things that have transpired even just since last Sunday, uh, I think this message, uh, it was planned beforehand, but I think uh, it's perhaps even more timely uh, as today we want to talk about hope. And so we'll be sharing uh, the need for hope, uh, the need for hope as God's people, uh, and the message of hope that we have uh, for the world around us. And uh, if we ever needed hope, uh, if we ever needed a hope that brings people together uh, under the Lordship of Christ uh, and in communion with one another, we certainly need it, uh, need it now. And uh, we'll be stepping into that lesson here in just a few moments. Um, if you've been with us before online, uh, you know that we're filming this uh, in advance of our regular service. Uh, and if you're in, in, in Northwest Tennessee and uh, physically able to be with us today, uh, we would love to have you. Uh, we'll be meeting at 9 a.m. at the church building, Lord willing, uh, and then 10 a.m. for our worship. 9 a.m. will be our uh, Bible class time, our Sunday school time. And then tonight, uh, Lord willing, at 5 p.m., uh, we'll be beginning a study of mentoring uh, by following the writings of the Apostle Paul uh, as he wrote to Timothy and Titus and to his friend uh, Philemon, or his uh, correspondent Philemon, I perhaps should say, uh, as he instructs them uh, as a father in the faith. Uh, last week, as we talked about Father's Day, we talked about um, the um, kind of emphasis that the New Testament puts on uh, God's family, uh, even uh, even as a extension of and, and primary over uh, the physical family in many cases. And so uh, we'll be beginning that study tonight, uh, talking about the pastoral epistles, as they're sometimes called, the mentoring uh, epistles of the Apostle Paul. And we would love to have you with us at 5, uh, 5 p.m. tonight. We're going to go ahead uh, this morning, if you're with us and you're watching this on Sunday, uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer, uh, and then we'll step into our lesson time. And then following that, I'll offer a couple of prayers uh, for those of you who may be taking uh, the Lord's Supper uh, with your family, uh, may have those supplies available and are doing that. Uh, if you're not able to do that uh, with us this morning or choosing not to do that, it's a great time to uh, reflect and to think about the cross. And obviously, if you are doing that, we're doing that uh, together and in communion with one another. We'll have some announcements uh, that will particularly pertain to our uh, local congregation, our local church family here in Dresden, uh, and then we'll close with prayer. Uh, expect our, our time today to be about 50 minutes, uh, and we appreciate you uh, tuning in with us and, and sharing in uh, this time of worship and study uh, today. Let's go ahead and pray together uh, as we begin, and uh, then we'll walk into God's Word uh, together. Let's pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we are grateful for this day and grateful for the opportunity we have to rise and to live another day in your service. Lord, we know that we are um, living in a blessed place. We're living uh, in a blessed community. And despite the hardships and difficulties that we're facing both locally and nationally and all around the world, uh, we appreciate and give thanks for uh, the blessing of life. We give thanks for the blessing of uh, the provision that you give to each and every one of us each and every day. Uh, our food, our clothing, our shelter, our relationships, and so many gifts and blessings that, that go far beyond just these essential needs. And Lord, we give you the glory for that, and we ask that you would help us uh, to participate in your work by sharing those blessings with others. Lord, in our local community, we are uh, facing difficulties. Uh, we need rain, Lord, and we pray that you would uh, give that to us in your good time. We pray that you would bless those who are involved in uh, the recovery process as we're still uh, cleaning up from the tornado and still trying to get people back in their homes and back in a situation where the uh, children can return to school and where the adults can be back in jobs where they can support their families. We know, Lord, that there are many um, complications in that. There are many different parts uh, to play 
And we ask that as your church, we would be open and we would be available to help in any way that we can. We know that there are many who are suffering throughout the world from war, uh, from famine, from natural disasters. We know, Lord, that we sometimes get so uh, caught up in our own affairs that we forget that there are many suffering uh, in other places and oftentimes suffering in far greater ways than we are, at least physically. And Lord, we ask that you would be in those situations, that you would lift up the people who were weary and that you would strengthen them. We pray for those in our congregation who are facing times of trial, those who are sick and hurting, those who may be grieving, those who may be going through uh, difficulties in their lives and in relationships, uh, those who may be troubled um, with uh, the cares and anxieties and worries of life, uh, Lord, we lift them up to you today and we ask that you would help us to cast our burdens on you and give us the ability to trust that you will carry us through. Help us to use the resources that we have, whether that's medicine or counseling or uh, companionship, friendship, uh, your word, help to bring all those things together so that we can uh, be revived and strengthened and live our lives uh, in faithfulness to you. Be with our leaders in our country, those who are making decisions that affect our lives. Help us to um, be willing to uh, realize the importance of um, understanding our role as believers in bearing witness to your truth in any situation and in every situation. Uh, help us, Lord, to take our thoughts and our ways uh, from your word and uh, from the example of Jesus rather than from the culture around us. We ask you, Lord, that you would help us to extend the message of Christ into the lives of others, that we would be willing to share it, that we would be willing to live it out in front of the people around us so that Jesus can be seen in our community, Jesus can be seen in our church family, uh, that Jesus can truly be seen living in and through us. We are thankful, Lord, for those who are giving their lives full time to the work of spreading the gospel and we lift up those men and women today and their families, and we ask that you would bless them and provide them with strength and provide them the ability to see uh, results from their labors that they might be uh, strengthened and encouraged to continue that, that fight of faith. Lord, we're most thankful for Jesus, for his example, his life, his death, his sacrifice for us, and we ask that you would conform us more and more to him. When we fall short of your glory, Lord, and we realize those things and we're convicted and we Resolve to turn from those things. We ask that you would strengthen us. We ask that if there are those watching today or those who are attending services today who have not made a commitment uh, to be a followers of, your, uh, of yours, to be adopted into your family, that they might do so even today. Be with us, Lord, and bless us through our time together online this morning. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, it's good to, uh, good to see each one of you here. Excuse me with a little water this morning. And uh, good to see again each one of you here and to have the ability uh, to share this time together. Obviously, I made a, a passing reference to this in our prayer. We are living in a very uh, divided world, uh, a very um, troubled uh, world, both oftentimes in the world at large. We think about the conflicts that are ongoing, the, the violence in our world. We think about our country and the divisions that are there. Uh, the dangers that are there, um, whether that's from uh, terrorism or uh, local uh, issues involving violence in our schools, or whether that is the cultural divisions that we see that not only, of course, affect our society, but affect the church uh, as well. There's divisions in families. Uh, we have families in our congregation and in our community who are struggling um, with hurt uh, with a sense of disappointment, a sense of betrayal uh, in their lives, in their marriages, in their relationships with their children. And of course, within our own hearts. Um, I know this past week with um, some of the um, issues that have come to the forefront uh, in our world in the last few days, a lot of us um, are struggling within to understand uh, what our role is in that. Uh, where do we stand? How do we speak up? Should we speak up uh, at all in these moments of crisis, in these moments of turmoil? And in all of those questions, uh, one thing that comes to me again and again when I look at God's Word and when I think about our world and uh, our role in it as believers is where do we look uh, for hope? 
Uh, as I said at the outset, we've been talking about, uh, you know, if, if we ever needed, you know, if we ever needed salvation, if we ever needed faithfulness, if we ever needed uh, the church. And today, uh, as I share this last lesson in this series, uh, if we ever needed hope, uh, we need it now. We need hope in our world. Uh, we need hope in the church as we attempt to uh, revive uh, the church following the pandemic, as we attempt to uh, renew and restore the church uh, in the light of the cultural divisions and the divisions within uh, God's family that we see. And we need something to sustain us. Um, we need something um, in these times of upheaval and in these times of uncertainty uh, to carry us through. And my mind was drawn back uh, this morning, and if you have your Bible, I'll be uh, reading from uh, Psalm 121 uh, to begin with this morning, and then I have some some other references as well. Um, we want to think about where we put our hope, uh, where we anchor that hope, where we secure that hope. Um, in Psalm 121, um, my uh, uh, prefix or the, the title that's given in the translation I'm reading from is God, the help of those uh, who seek him. The first verse is familiar to us, I think. I will lift up my eyes uh, to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, and he shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Such a powerful uh, message there in that psalm. The idea that we cannot hope in ourselves. Um, if we hope in, in uh, the goodness of people, if we hope in the justice of people, uh, if we trust in our own abilities or our own uh, actions or our own good intentions, uh, we're always going to fall short. And so we have to lift up our eyes uh, and see that God is uh, our hope. I want to mention just a couple of things about that this morning in our, in our time together. First, I would suggest to you, if we're going to have uh, the hope that we need in tough, uh, in tough times, um, this is fundamental. Our hope must be uh, founded in God. Uh, our hope must be founded in God. Um, we cannot afford uh, in our day and time uh, and in the world in which we live and in the church uh, environment in which we live uh, among the people of God to build on anything less uh, than, the pr than the presence uh, and the faithfulness uh, of God. Um, we sing that song sometimes that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood uh, and righteousness. Um, that's it. Uh, our hope cannot be uh, confined to self-focus. Our hope cannot be uh, based on a person or a political party or a church organization. Um, our hope cannot be based even in the goodness of people or the graciousness of uh, our community, uh, our hope instead uh, must be completely uh, based and completely grounded uh, and founded in uh, our relationship with our Heavenly Father. It's not built on wealth uh, or talents. It's not built on, again, uh, any type of political power, any type of cultural standard. Uh, the hope that perseveres, the hope that endures, uh, all things, as Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, is a hope that is grounded in uh, relationship with God and in the love of God. My hope, uh, it can never really um, stand adequately uh, on the foundation of my own uh, goodness or on my own faithfulness. I'm going to fail uh, to be who I want to be. I'm going to fall short of God's glory. I'm going to sin. Uh, people around me are going to sin. They're going to fall short of God's glory. Uh, our world is going to show great beauty, but also great tragedy, great fallenness, great darkness. Uh, and as we found our hope on anything other uh, than that ultimate relationship with God, 
um, are really on God himself and, and through our relationship with him, our access to him, uh, we're going to fall short. Our hearts are prone uh, to wander. Uh, we're prone to leave behind God uh, and God's ways. Even when he's blessing, uh, even when he's helping us, we forget uh, the necessity of being rooted in him. Uh, and of course, when we go through trials and difficulties, we so often look for our salvation uh, in something other than uh, him and his, his faithfulness to us. Um, when Jesus ended the, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, as it closes there in Matthew chapter 7, uh, in Matthew's recording, uh, it ends with the uh, story, the parable of the wise and foolish builders. Uh, the wise man built his house upon the rock, as we know from, uh, from Sunday school uh, days. And the idea of that, of course, is uh, Jesus says there, he who hears these words of mine and does them, uh, his house is founded and built upon uh, the rock. Um, my relationship to God cannot be founded in my own strength. It has to be um, fully foundationally dependent uh, on God and his character. Not my character, not my ability to get things right, uh, but my ability, uh, my ability is secondary uh, by far to God's nature and his character. Um, in Romans uh, chapter uh, 15 and verse 13, uh, Paul, as he is kind of closing out uh, or beginning to close out his letter to the Romans, he says uh, in, verse, um, in the verse there, uh, Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the God of hope. Uh, Paul tells us that our God is a God of hope and that we are uh, in him uh, able to abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, there is no true hope apart from God. Uh, there is no true hope that does not draw its source and its strength from God. Just as our human love and our human joy are reflections of those characteristics in God, uh, our hope is the same. Uh, God is the one who provides that hope. He's the one who offers that hope. Uh, and it's only found in him. There also in Romans chapter 15, earlier in the chapter in verse 4, Paul talks about that the things that were written in times past, in other words, the stories, uh, the Old Testament scripture, the accounts, the Psalms, uh, the wisdom that's contained there, the prophets uh, and their prophecies, all of those things, uh, they were written so that we could learn uh, about them, uh, yes, uh, but not just in an academic sense. They were given uh, that through the patience, through the uh, comfort of the scriptures we might have, not knowledge, um, not appreciation only, but hope. Uh, when we study the Bible, it's not just to, to get more facts. Facts are important. Uh, they're necessary for us to understand uh, God's meaning and God's will. But it's not just an intellectual exercise. Uh, it's so that we can found our hope, we can place our hope, in the faithfulness of God. He's been faithful to his people before, as Psalm uh, 121 reminds us. He's been good uh, to his people in the past, and he will be good to us if we will reach out to him and look to him uh, in our times of great difficulty and struggle. Um, in writing to Timothy in uh, his introduction or his opening sentence, Paul talks about the idea that Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus uh, in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 1 is our hope. Um, my hope, your hope, if we ever want to make it uh, in this life, if we want to be able not only to have the strength to live from day to day, uh, but to look forward uh, with uh, joy, to look forward um, with uh, a gratitude and with hopefulness, uh, our foundation has to be uh, in God. Not in the things that are shifting, uh, not in the sands that don't provide a lasting foundation, but anchored uh, on that solid rock uh, that is God, uh, that is Christ, that is his word, that is the presence of uh, the Spirit. And so I would say, you know, before we can talk about anything else um, about hope and understanding the Christian's hope, uh, we have to understand that it has to be, uh, our hope has to be founded in God. But also I would say that our hope has to be an expectant one, uh, ex expectation. Uh, it has to be something that we are uh, looking forward uh, to, 
uh, and that is not just something, again, intellectual or academic, but something that is pressing us uh, forward, something that is uh, encouraging us to long uh, for better uh, for better things. Um, we live in uh, the hope of um, a, a reviving here and now. We live in the hope of an arriving of the Lord Jesus when he comes. Um, we want to and we hope to and we strive to uh, keep ourselves in the love of God, uh, that we would have that relationship, uh, that that expectation uh, is present, uh, that that expectation is uh, conscious and always in the forefront uh, of our minds, uh, that sense of expectation. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, uh, Paul, Romans chapter 8, uh, I think we could do a series that would last uh, many, many weeks, perhaps many months, uh, on just Romans chapter 8. Uh, but in verses 24 and 25, Paul says, we were saved in this hope, that is, in this uh, gospel hope, this relationship uh, with Christ. But hope that is seen is not uh, hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly or we earnestly uh, wait for it with perseverance. Um, the hope of the Christian will never be fully realized in this life. In this life, we continually are locked in a struggle of disappointment, of um, anger, of frustration, of hardship, of hurt, of sorrow. Um, that is an ever-present part of living in the world in which we live. Paul talks about there in Romans that, that all of creation is, is bound up in this struggle, uh, looking for a hope, looking for something beyond what we're currently experiencing. When we see that, uh, we won't need it. Uh, when we see the fulfillment, we won't need the expectation. There'll be no hope in heaven. Uh, there'll be joy in heaven. There'll be love in heaven. Um, but there'll be no sin in heaven. Um, there'll be no frustration in heaven. There'll be nothing delayed in heaven. Uh, we think about hope as something that is deferred. Uh, we're looking for something that is not yet fully realized. I want to live out of that hope. I want to live out of that expectation. But I realize that not all that I hope for, not all that I long for, is going to be fulfilled uh, here and now. Uh, in Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah writing in chapter 3, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, uh, the soul who seeks for him. Lamentations 3 and verse 25. Waiting is so hard for us. We're so bad at it uh, culturally. And yet, when we look at the first century church, and when we look at the Old Testament saints, they were pretty bad at it too. Um, I think that's why they're constantly reminded uh, about the importance of patience, uh, the importance of endurance, the importance of perseverance. As Christians, we're not living just to get through today. Uh, it may feel like that sometimes. It may feel like all of the noise around us, uh, the anger around us, the uh, hardships and, and struggles that we experience are pressing down upon us, and we're just struggling uh, to get get to the next day. Um, that may be true in an immediate sense, but a Christian should never uh, lose sight of the fact that our hope is something far beyond uh, what we're currently experiencing, what we're currently participating in. Um, we want to work to make the world better. We want to strive to make our families stronger and our communities safer. Uh, we want to live in such a way that our lives uh, grow in holiness and that we bear spiritual fruit to God. But ultimately, my hope is not in what is seen. My hope is in something that lies beyond, something that I can sense um, in the distance, something that's talked about in God's Word, even in shadowy terms at times. Um, but something that is coming, that I am living for, and that hopefully you are living for with an expectation and a longing uh, that is not fully realized yet, uh, but will be. I think about um, in the prophet Micah, uh, this verse, I was I had to check the reference. I wasn't 100% sure, uh, but in Micah chapter 7, 
uh, where he's talking. He says, therefore, I look for the Lord. I wait for the God of my salvation and my God will hear me. Um, there's a lot of waiting in this life um, for things not yet fully realized, not yet fully seen. And yet we have the assurance uh, that hope does not disappoint. Hope that is founded in God, hope that waits expectantly, um, will not disappoint us because God is faithful. God is faithful even as we struggle uh, to understand what's happening in our world, what's happening in um, the lives around us and in our own hearts. God is faithful. The last thing I'll mention about hope, and I think it's important to keep this at the forefront as well, is that our hope needs to be active and alive. It's a living hope, uh, as the scripture uh, tells us. Um, Peter talks about in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 that we have uh, been begotten, that we have been born again, not to just live life as we lived before, but we have begotten, been begotten again to a living hope uh, through the resurrection of Jesus. My hope is not in uh, what I do. My hope is not in who I am. My hope is not in my abilities. My hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the only foundation uh, in which we can stand. If the Apostle Paul, with his um, uh, admittedly perfectionism, his religious, his religious uh, legalism, if he can say, all oh, that's nothing uh, if I don't have Christ, then I think each one of us uh, watching today, we know our own hearts. We know the struggles that we face. We know the temptations that plague us individually. And I hope that we can realize, uh, I believe that we can, uh, and your presence here today indicates this, that we need a hope beyond ourselves uh, that's real, that's living, that's active, uh, and is truly, truly alive. I remember when I was uh, a young kid, and, and uh, some of you uh, who know uh, Roe Jr., my uncle Roe, uh, will appreciate this story, but he was, of course, uh, much younger then. This would have been in the uh, mid to late 80s, I guess. And uh, I was the oldest grandchild, and so at four, five, six years old, uh, I was a little more aware of what was going on uh, at Christmas time uh, than the younger kids. Row uh, three wasn't even uh, wasn't even born yet, but uh, we were uh, staying at at my grandparents' house uh, for Christmas Eve. There were fewer of us then, of course, and uh, we were all kind of camped out there. And I wanted to uh, lie awake in the living room, uh, stretched out on on their uh, love seat there. Uh, and wait for Santa Claus. And um, I was determined to do that again. I was four or five years old. Uh, I thought that that was a good idea. I had some questions about the whole process, uh, and I wanted to check on that. And, and Roe Jr., as my uncle, uh, who would have been in his 20s then, uh, he was kind of teasing me about that and talking about, you know, if you don't go to sleep, Santa Claus won't come. And But yet I was determined uh, to to stay awake. And so I laid there and waited. Um, it was an active waiting. You know, I was trying to stay awake. I was, you know, counting the ornaments on the Christmas tree. I was thinking about all the things that I had asked for for Christmas. Uh, I was thinking about the food we were going to eat the next day, I'm sure. Uh, just kind of working all that over in my mind. And of course, uh, as a child, eventually I fell asleep. And when I woke up the next morning, I was in the bedroom. They had moved me in the night and indeed, Santa Claus had come, uh, and the presents had been left, and uh, you know, ran into the living room and and uh, opened the presents and uh, enjoyed that time uh, with our family and uh, took pictures and all of those things. Uh, what I think is so uh, interesting about that, uh, from a, from a, this idea of having an active faith, is that it's not passive. Uh, when a child is waiting for Santa or when a child is looking forward uh, to a, uh, a ball game or an adult is looking forward to a vacation or as school teachers, many of our uh, congregation are involved with the school system and they will be looking forward to the end of school, uh, looking forward to summer vacation. Uh, some of you have planned trips that when, then were delayed by COVID, and now you're looking forward to, to rescheduling those or looking forward to taking those in the future. That is not a passive hope. Well, I hope that trip works out. I hope that someday we get to do that again. We don't have any plans. I haven't really looked at my calendar. 
Of course not. We, we actively uh, hope. Uh, we understand that uh, as the date approaches for the end of school, uh, preparations need to be made. Um, we understand that as Christmas is coming, uh, preparations uh, need to be made. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, things will work out, but we also understand uh, that being active and being alive and being focused uh, is a part of true hope, is a part of uh, living into uh, the expectation that we have. Um, that is true in the Christian life as well. Um, I hope that the Lord comes. Uh, I believe that the Lord will come. I believe that we can't know the day or the hour that the Lord will come, even as Jesus told us, uh, even as Peter reminds us, even as Paul mentions to us. Uh, and yet I believe that in my hope, it's not enough to have that hope and to say, well, I've put that out there. I've trusted in Christ. I'm a part of his family. And now I'm just going to wait it out. Um, that hope has to drive us um, to feel ourselves uh, more and more with Christ and to carry his message more and more to those uh, around us. I'm not building my hope on myself. Uh, I sure hope not because I am weak and you are weak. Uh, we are fallible. We are flawed. We say things that we shouldn't say. We leave unsaid things that we should say. And yet, as I trust in God through Christ, I believe that my hope compels me uh, to share the, the message, uh, to share my life uh, to, with the people around me. And I think that's the same for you as well. If we're truly having our hope in Christ, uh, Christ has to be in us as our hope. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27, Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um, it's not just an abstract idea of Jesus. It's not, well, Jesus may come or Jesus may not. It's that Jesus is here uh, in the sense that he's among us. He's living in his people. He's wanting to reach people around us uh, with the good news. Um, and if we truly have that hope, we can't keep it to ourselves. It has to be taken uh, to the people around us. That we're not trying to prove uh, our spiritual uh, quality. We're not trying to prove uh, that people need to trust in us or trust in our view or our system or our way of thinking. People need to trust in God. They need to come to God through Jesus Christ. They need to come to God through Jesus Christ, through the ways that are described in his word. Um, and if I have that hope and I'm not sharing it, why is that? Why have I allowed my life to become uh, passive, to become dormant, to become stale? Uh, a living thing is going to move. A living thing is going to grow. A living thing is going to put down roots and extend up branches. Um, and we're called to do that in in Christ. Uh, it's not just enough to, to put that hope in once. Uh, it's an earnest expectation. It's believing that every day I have a part and you have a part, a God-given part to be his workmanship uh, and to engage in the things that he has called us to do and called us to be, not for our own glory, uh, but for his glory and so that others can find uh, their foundation uh, in him. Uh, that's a challenge for each of us. And we need that hope. Our world, uh, the Lord knows that our world needs that hope. Um, I'm reminded of that line from the Shawshank Redemption, uh, that film from uh, the 90s, uh, where Andy Dufresne, who is falsely accused and put into prison and later escapes, he, he writes in a note uh, to his fellow prisoner who's out on parole uh, that hope is a good thing and no good thing ever dies. Um, in Christ, we have a hope that will never die. Uh, in Christ, we have the hope that we will never die, but that we will live with him forever. And that is a calling that we are called to. Each one of us as believers, um, not just to take into our own lives and benefit from ourselves, but to share with the world and to share with each person around us. Again, appreciate your uh, presence here today. If you have your communion supplies uh, go ahead and be taking those out, and uh, I'll offer those two prayers here in just a moment. 
Uh, we'll do first a prayer for the bread uh, and then a prayer for the cup. Uh, we're trying at Lebanon right now in our in-person uh, services to figure out uh, what our path forward uh, with communion will be. We know the way that we've been doing it um, has, has not been ideal. It's a little distracting with the individual kits and, and so forth, but we're looking for a way that's safe. We know our COVID numbers uh, are climbing again a little bit here in our community, and uh, we're still trying to kind of figure that out. But if you're uh, joining in with us today and to participate in that communion, uh, as we'll be doing in the, at the building in, in a short while, uh, go ahead and get those supplies out. I'm going to pray for the bread, and then I'll pause for just a few seconds. If you need more time, want to take more time, uh, feel free to pause the video. Uh, again, it's pre-recorded, so you won't lose the stream. It should just pause in place uh, and resume in place, and then we'll, you, we will have the uh, prayer for the cup as well. Let's go ahead and pray together. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we are thankful again for this day. Thankful that we can have a hope that is grounded in you. And thankful that that hope comes through the sacrifice of Jesus. As we take this bread, which to us as Christians reminds us and helps us to recall the body of Christ that was given in our stead, uh, help us to do that in a way that uh, causes us to remember and causes us to honor Christ as we live. It's in his name we pray. Amen. And let's also pray for the cup at this time. Let's pray together. At this time also, our Heavenly Father, we're reminded of the blood of Jesus, that his blood is the pathway to cleansing. We're grateful for the sacrifice he was willing to make and the sacrifice you were willing to make in sending him to live among us to give us an example that we might follow in his steps and to give us an example of sacrificial love that took him to the cross. We ask that as we take this cup today, uh, that we would be reminded of that gift of life uh, and that gift that gives us, gives us our calls for hope. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Once again, we're thankful for each one of you being able to um, be with us today and to be able to share in our time of uh, study and worship together. I do have just a few announcements uh, for our local folks particularly, and uh, we'll make mention of a couple of things that might affect our online uh, out-of-town folks as well. Um, our giving, uh, that has continued uh, so solidly, and we're thankful for that, uh, not just so that we can continue to, to worship and, and so forth, but uh, to continue to support our missionaries and our benevolent work uh, that we've done uh, both locally and that we have ongoing throughout the world. And so appreciate your willingness to give, uh, and we can uh, give you ways to do that if you need that, just messages, uh, and certainly can give at the building, uh, and uh, we'll find a, a better way if, if needed. Um, do want to mention some birthdays and anniversaries this week. Uh, tomorrow, uh, the 27th, would have been Dan and Mildred Crawford's uh, anniversary, and they were such a a uh, key part of our congregation for so many uh, for so many years, and we miss them both, and uh, uh, miss Mr. Dan's leadership, miss Miss Mildred's support uh, of him and of our church, and uh, we're thankful for them. Uh, on Tuesday, the 28th, will be Ricky and Dolores' uh, anniversary as well. Uh, they may be watching this morning. I know they've been dealing with some sickness uh, during the last week, sinus infections and so forth, but uh, hope that they will be doing better and be able to celebrate uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday is Paige Vaughn's uh, birthday. We're thankful for Paige and uh, the role she has in uh, helping our, our young people, both at the school and, of course, uh, teaching in our Sunday school with our church family. Um, Abby Young's birthday is also Wednesday. Uh, Abby, of course, is Kyle and Brandy's older daughter, and uh, we're thankful for Abby and her family. Uh, Friday is Vicki uh, Norad, my mom's birthday, and uh, thankful for Vicki also and the work she does with teaching our young people. Uh, Saturday the 2nd is Buddy and June K. Kemp's anniversary, and that is also Mike and Norma uh, Parham's anniversary. So we had a big uh, first week of July, 
uh, or end of June, I should say, and first week of July, uh, birthday and anniversary-wise. I know we'll have some more uh, to announce uh, next week. Uh, please continue as we move into our uh, church news to be looking for an update on our Magi Box situation. We're trying to get those picked up. Um, um, and passed out, brought back. Uh, it's kind of uh, a, um, a different process this time because of uh, not only the delays that we've had with COVID, but also uh, issues with shipping. And so want to be aware of that. We usually do that in about August and uh, first of September. We're going to try to do that in July uh, and August this year. So uh, go ahead and be thinking about that. The Todd family, the Bradbury family, uh, perhaps others uh, that, that fail me now as far as uh, names have provided us with Spanish uh, New Testaments and some other materials uh, to include in those. Those will be going to Honduras. Uh, so um, keep that in mind and be picking up uh, those items. Uh, and that list is available online. We'll link to it here on the page. Uh, we'll have power for today. The new quarter of that will be out. Uh, and if you need one of those from home or need to get one of those, we'll send it on to you. Uh, also, the July prayer calendar, I'll be posting that. Uh, the end of this week, and we'll have copies to uh, to pass out at services today. Uh, we do have some new mission updates from Chris Carter, as well as from the Mosier family, and we'll share those also. Um, there are a lot of area churches that are having uh, some version of a summer series or a VBS or a gospel meeting, a friends and family day, something like that. Uh, if you know of those uh, that are within our, our county or our area large, larger, uh, let us know. Uh, appreciate your prayers this week. I'll be speaking, um, Lord willing, at Greenbrier this afternoon, and then uh, two nights at Hilldale in Clarksville, and then at Alamo on Wednesday night. It's a very busy week uh, travel-wise for me in uh, in dealing with those summer series uh, and, uh, and adult VBS classes, and so would appreciate your prayers. Uh, but if you have something that's here locally within a you know reasonable drivable distance, we'd be loved to love to post about that. Uh, also, um, again, as we mentioned in our prayer, we want to continue our, to remember our community uh, as we're recovering from the tornado. Uh, a lot of funds are going out. A lot of pickup has been done. Many of you have probably seen that uh, in town, and so keep keep those folks in your prayers. I would also mention our, our country as a whole. Uh, obviously, we're in a very uh, divided uh, season of uh, life in our world, culturally, socially, uh, politically. Um, we all have, of course, um, opinions about that. Some of us very strong opinions about that. But I would ask that we would just uh, keep that in our prayers. Um, um, the divisions, of course, in the world always affect uh, the church, uh, whether we intend for it to or not. And so let's be prayerful uh, about that. Uh, I need that reminder, and, and maybe you do as well. Um, we have several folks, uh, as we make uh, a final mention of some health concerns, uh, several folks who've had COVID uh, in the last couple of weeks who tested positive and who are quarantining. Uh, don't have anyone who is uh, hospitalized right now, thankfully. Thank the Lord for that, but uh, with COVID. Uh, but we are uh, keeping an eye on that, obviously, and we will uh, let you know if there are any changes. We want to remember Tammy Dole, uh, who has been in the hospital uh, in the last week dealing with an infection. Uh, Tammy has been taking um, some um, chemo treatments as part of her cancer uh, regimen, and um, they had an adverse effect, of course, on her immune system, and uh, she was uh, dealing with a, a separate infection, and we want to continue to remember Tammy at this time, and I'll try to uh, update the folks at the building uh, if I have an update on her uh, by the time we get to services. Uh, Sherry Winston is recovering well from her surgery. We're thankful for that. Uh, Tommy Bradbury is still at the Weekly County Nursing Home um, and uh, having a difficult time um, right now and want to continue to remember Tommy. I know Tommy would appreciate a card. It's a little bit difficult, uh, I know, to, uh, to kind of know whether or not to visit nursing homes and those type of things right now uh, as COVID numbers are, are back again. Uh, but a card, I think I know, would be appreciated uh, by Tommy, and I've been able to see him uh, once here in the last couple of weeks, and and uh, I know he needs that encouragement, and of course, Judith uh, does as well. Lee is also, Lee Gwynn is also at the nursing home, and want to continue to remember Lee. I want to remember Kay Branson also, who's been dealing with health issues and uh, preparing to uh, do some travel. Uh, Rachel Good is undergoing uh, chemo treatments for breast cancer 
in Nashville. So we want to remember Garner and Rachel and their family, um, obviously with kids going out and doing things and coming home. And, uh, you know, there's potential there for sickness. Uh, and uh, we want to definitely be praying for Rachel. I uh, want to remember Ray Burris and Belinda Badgett, who are Greta's niece and nephew, uh, who are also undergoing cancer treatment. Uh, Greta's sister, uh, Brenda Kay, uh, is also in poor health. I want to remember Miss Jeanette Robinson, Miss Sue Brewer, Miss Faye Robinson, Lanny and Carolyn McIntyre, as they are uh, continuing to recover from ongoing uh, health issues. Myra Deaver, uh, Mitchell Culver, and Brian Parham. Uh, Charlie Culver also is uh, taking treatments again. We want to remember Andrea Hughes' parents, her mother, uh, Roberta, and her father, uh, Robert Boyd, uh, as they are both dealing with health challenges. Continue to remember Mr. Edward Hainline, Robert Hart, uh, Dickie Hart, uh, and their family, Haley and their girls. Uh, Haley is uh, doing well following her surgery. We want to remember Richard Adams as he continues to take cancer treatments, uh, and also Tyler Mayo, uh, who is a friend of the Winston family who is taking uh, cancer treatments. That's a long list, uh, and obviously we could add to it uh, many others who are being affected by sickness uh, in our community. Those are the ones that have been given to me. I hope that those updates are uh, accurate, uh, and if you have someone to add to that list, someone to take off that list, maybe you're on that list and you've uh, reached a point where you, you don't need to be remembered uh, specifically by name, uh, just let me know, and I'll try to get that updated uh, and to be a little bit more accurate. We have a hope, uh, a living hope, an active hope, a present hope. Um, Christ is here in his people. He is coming again in his person. Uh, we are going to see the fulfillment of our hope. And it's not just enough to hold on. Uh, we want to hold on to faith. We want to hold on to our um, our place that we have in God's kingdom. Yes, absolutely. Continue in the faith. But we also have to reach out. We also have to grow. Uh, we also have to be active and alive. It's a living hope, uh, not just in the lives of people that have accepted it. It is a living hope that as we have accepted it, we have a responsibility uh, to take it to the world. Let's not lose heart. Um, we're going to see good. There's so much good in the world right now, uh, and we don't need to allow the noise uh, or the frustrations or the hard feelings that we can sometimes have uh, to blind us to all the good that God has done, is doing, and ultimately the good that will be done uh, in Christ's return and will be done between time in the lives of his people and in the lives of his church. I hope we can go out this week and live, um, hopefully. Uh, I hope we can go out and live with an expectation that Christ is coming and I want to be active and alive, and vibrant, and full uh, of that joy uh, that makes my Christ living, my Christianity, my discipleship uh, contagious, and so that people will ask a reason uh, for the hope that I have and that you have in Christ. Let's pray together as we close this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful again for this day, grateful for the opportunity that we have to live in hope, and we ask that you would help us keep hope alive. Help us realize that when our hope is placed in you, not only does it never die, but we have the earnest expectation. We have the certainty of its ultimate fulfillment. Help us, Lord, to live in hope and to reach out to others with hope. Um, it's so easy to grow weary. It's so easy to grow pessimistic. It's so easy to grow cynical about the world around us, about the church, about our own hearts but we ask that that hope would be revived in us and that it would be built on nothing less than Jesus. Help us to be more and more like him each day that we live. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Hope everyone has a uh, great week and we will, uh, Lord willing, see you soon. Have a great week.